Now I've not made one of these listicle type videos in quite some time, but as someone who's recently gone through the process of changing their smartphone, it's given me pause for thought to think about the apps that I use on a day-to-day -day basis as a junior doctor. Now obviously no app is entirely essential to our workflow, we have electronic record systems for that. But really, given the volume of high complexity information that we need to be able to recall at any given time, there are some really important cognitive shortcuts that we can use to make our decision making both easier and faster. And one of the best ways to do that is to use apps that store and retrieve all of that knowledge more effectively than we can do by ourselves. And just as a funny thing before we get started, this actually was going to be a top five apps video, but when I was transferring everything across and deciding what to keep and what not to keep, there were only actually four that I used every single day at work. So I'm actually going to leave number five to you. Let me know in the comments down below what you think should be the number five app on everyone's install list. I'll leave links to every app that we talk about today in the description below and a huge thanks to Brilliant who's sponsoring today's video and I'll tell you more about them in a second. So let's start with the BNF, the British National Formulary. You will have all heard of this book, it is the one-stop pharmaceutical reference for everything that you need working in the healthcare system. Every year a new edition is published and all of us will have a paper copy floating around from medical school somewhere from like five years ago that's no longer up to date or useful. But that begs the obvious question, why bother with paper copies when they'll be out of date in a year, it uses paper to make them, it's all very wasteful, why not have an electronic version that's easily accessible and up to date? at all times. You can search for any drug you like, check its indications and dosing guidelines, create a list of favourites that you use often on your given ward, and one of the best features in my humble opinion, check the interactions between different drugs right from within the app. This is a lifesaver for me working in neurology at the moment, lots of people are on anti-epileptics and everything interacts with everything. It's completely free and widely accessible, all you need is an email address to get going. Second up today is a workplace tool that is incredibly practical and useful, Induction. Induction is one of those amazing apps that does one thing and it does it really really well and what it essentially is is a directory of all of the switchboard contacts for your local hospital. Now I'm going to have to blur a lot of what's on screen right now because these are not publicly available numbers, but this app saves a huge amount of time because you don't have to wait on hold to be put through to switchboard, and in turn it reduces the burden on switchboard call handlers and saves their time for more important and urgent tasks. Given that a huge percentage of my time as a junior doctor is tracking down particular people to make referrals and get advice, induction is a must-have time saver that anyone working in a hospital should have on their phones. Not to mention if you're locuming or shadowing at another site where you don't normally work, you can simply flick it over to your new site and it will automatically update the entire list of contacts. Now let's take a quick break for me to tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant, which also has an app, by the way. We all know how important learning by doing is, remember see one, do one, teach one, and Brilliant is all about learning interactively through hands-on courses in science, maths, logic, whatever else takes your fancy. And the best part is that it's all done through puzzles, brain teasers and other problem solving exercises. It's learning by doing. I've been using Brilliant's courses to get to grips with the basics of machine learning and trial and error algorithms, but there's a huge range of packages on offer including statistics, finance and calculus. There's something for everyone. And because it's all online, you can take Brilliant on the go with you. Maybe you've got a quiet few minutes at work, you can pick back up right where you left off. Brilliant are also supporting my viewers with a special offer just for you. You can head over to brilliant.org slash ollieburton to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons today. And the first 200 visitors that use the link in the description will get 20% off an annual membership. Thanks once again to Brilliant for being brilliant by supporting my channel. So app number three today is MicroGuide. I've already talked today about prescribing in the form of the BNF, but MicroGuide is specifically all about antibiotic prescribing. And you might say, well, Ollie, why do we need a separate app for that? We already have the BNF. 
Well, while, of course, you will learn in medical school what particular type of antibiotic you need to use for infections, NHS trusts and hospitals often have very specific local guidelines as to what they advise for each type of infection. For a straightforward chest infection, for example, it might be coamoxiclav at one site and doxycycline at another. And a lot of the time, this is specifically planned and coordinated between trusts to prevent antibiotic resistance. Microguide is a very logical and no-nonsense app, everything is very well organised by body system and gives you the local guidelines to antibiotic prescribing while including the details of any risk scores or other calculations you need to do in order to guide decision making, as well as the correct duration of treatment. And I know from experience this is one of the things that we often gloss over but is really important to ensuring good stewardship. So again, microguide, an absolute lifesaver, must-have app. And lastly today, let's talk about MDCalc, which, as I'm sure you can work out from the name, is a calculator app. However, this one is less about quadratics and calculus, and more about saying that you really do need to do the D-dimer, even though you don't want to. What MDCalc does is it automatically calculates the most commonly used risk scores that we use as part of day-to-day -day treatment decisions. For example, the CURB65 score that we use in determining the severity and mortality risks of community-acquired pneumonia. But perhaps most importantly, it includes all the information as to when and why to use a particular score, when not to use it, and the pearls and pitfalls of using it in regular practice. It also gives you the next steps once you've calculated a particular score, so what am I gonna do with it for my patient? And it outlines a lot of the evidence base that went into creating the score, which for those of us that like to think more academically about the evidence that underpins our decision-making, I find that really useful, and it's one of my favorite parts of the app. So thank you very much guys, that's four of my must-have apps for medical students and junior doctors that I keep on my phone at all times. Please let me know if any of these are on your phone and we need to think about that number five spot. What have I missed off? What do you have and consider indispensable in your clinical work? Let me know down in the description and thanks once again to Brilliant for supporting the channel today. Take care everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye.